morning everyone welcome back to the channel so today I uh, got up early headed up to the Barrow Lake Wilderness area up in the uh, Adirondack Mountains um, hoping to uh, capture some sunrise shots here this morning however today's video is going to be geared more toward the safety aspect of landscape photography uh, after watching some videos with Simone Dentremont, um, uh, one of my the photographers I follow on YouTube uh, in Nova Scotia, um, who does some photography trips with um, Gavin Hardcastle, um, who's also another um, uh, YouTube channel that I follow, Photo Tripper, um, and hearing about Simone's um, near near death fall. <laughs> near death falls in regards to just um sure-footedness and those types of things thought it would be a good idea um it's been something i've been planning for a while to record what a landscape photographer should carry with him as far as safety um one of the things that um always concerns me and always concerns my wife obviously is um being out here alone so those are some of the things that you have to consider when you're out here by yourself. How do you keep yourself safe and um, ensure that you're able to get back home, you're able to enjoy yourself while you're out shooting the landscapes and um, you know just staying healthy. So stay, stay tuned uh, and we'll give you uh, 10 tips on what I do to stay safe um, in, in nature. So it's a balmy 22 degrees here this morning and uh, a little more snow here than there is back at home. But uh, good morning to be out, nice and quiet. So number one, the number one safety item that I would recommend for anybody who's going to be going out on their own for landscape photography is make sure you tell people where you're going. Leave an itinerary just to let people basically know you're going to be in this area and try not to change the plan unless you're within a cell tower region where you can actually send your change of plans because if you're telling your loved ones that you're going to be in a certain area then if you don't return for whatever reason then when they send authorities they're going to send authorities to wherever you've told them that you're going to be and so it's important that you don't change your plans unless um, you're communicating that information to them uh, ahead of time.
So while I'm waiting for the fire to, to uh, warm up, so I can warm up some water for some, some coffee, I wanted to get to the next point, which was uh, carrying a some type of a device where you can contact civilization without having to rely on cell phone. So I carry an inReach device and the inReach allows me to actually begin tracking um, my route and sending a waypoint every 10 minutes back to uh, civilization so that uh, my wife can actually check online and see my progress as I'm moving to wherever I'm going. So if I'm going uh, to a specific location, she can tell when I'm there. I can go from uh, sending a message to her to let her know that I'm sa I've safely arrived. I also uh, have the capability of being able to switch this into an emergency mode where I can press the SOS button and um, it will actually send a, a uh, an alert to the service that you subscribe to. There is a monthly subscription to this. Um, I pay about $12 a month for the service, but when you're alone, um, it's good to have a, another source of being able to contact uh, civilization and be able to um, get help if you, if you need it. If you twist an ankle, you know, you break, break a leg or, or sprain your knee or whatever it happens to be, um, you have a way of being able to get help. So tip number four, um, or tip number three, I should say, is have some form or some way of being able to make heat. Today I'm bringing a uh, small wood stove, twig stove, if you want to call it. Uh, so I have a way of being able to create a small fire, keep it contained. Um, and obviously that means you'd need a way to be able to start a fire. So um, I carry fire steel with me and a carbon steel knife so I can create sparks to start a fire. I also carry matches. I'll carry a uh, lighter and I also, I'll carry a carbon arc style um, lighter as well. So I can at least get a fire going and, and generate some warmth. Also, um, being able to create something hot to drink will help, you know, bring up your body temperature and prevent you from getting hypothermia. If you're ever in a situation, an emergency situation where um, you have to wait for help or you have to stay overnight in the woods uh, when you're out um, trying to find locations or shooting locations. So tip number four, um, in order to make um, something warm to drink, obviously you have to make sure you're bringing water. Um, I've been in a situation where I brought water, left it back at the car, actually walked to my um, destination where I wanted to um, uh, shoot a, a pond. And um, once I got to the pond, realized I didn't have any water. And it was one of the hottest days of the year, of course. So um, fortunately, I had only hiked back about a mile and a half and uh, was able to get back to the car and, and get some water. But always carry a bottle of water with you or carry some way of being able to filter water, whether that means carrying an actual filter, uh, squeeze filter, um, or uh, bringing tablets with you that you can actually um, add to the water, chlorine tablets that will um, uh, purify the water, or a way to be able to create a fire and boil water, which means I'm um, having to carry a container that um, uh, is, is metal and will be able to withstand heat from a fire in order for you to be able to boil water. So tip number five, I think we're at, <laughs> I can't keep track now, but tip number five. Um, so one of the things that I like to bring in my bag is some sort of shelter. 
So this is a very um, lightweight shelter uh, with the um, tarp and all the tie downs. I think it weighs about half a pound, uh, but it's worth it if you ever get stuck um, in a situation where uh, you have to spend an overnight, at least you've got some way of covering yourself, or if you've got a th sudden storm and uh, you want to build a shelter real quickly, I think this took me all of five minutes to, to put up, and then um, you've got some way of protecting yourself from the elements. So carrying something like this that weighs less than, uh, less than half a pound and is about the size of a baseball and putting it in your bag um, is a no-brainer for me. So I just make sure that uh, I throw it in my bag and I've got it just in case for emergencies. So one of the other things that um, I like to bring um, is just a small safety kit. Um, it contains um, a basically an army style cup, um, like what they used to use in World War II. You used to be able to slide a canteen into it and um, and I fill it up with different um, safety items. I've got a, um, a security or safety blanket here that's uh, um, relatively inexpensive. You can buy those at any of the outdoor stores. I also carry um, a uh, safety bivy. Uh, so in the event that I have to do an overnight, and then, uh, you know, when it's cold like it is today, then uh, I've got a way of being able to keep myself warm, uh, especially if, a, if I wasn't planning on being out overnight. Uh, I have a way of being able to um, uh, communicate with the outside world uh, with a whistle um, and, uh, you know, various, various other items. You can keep food in here. Uh, I've got some bug spray in here right now. Um, I've got a snap glow stick in the event that I've got to um, uh, communicate and contact uh, searchers who might be looking for me if I've ever had to use the SOS button. So let's face it, none of us are getting any younger. And uh, I know as I get older, you know, my I need a little more stability when I'm walking through the woods. So another safety precaution is just having trekking poles. So the trekking poles basically turn you into a quadruped. Um, it helps me when I'm carrying a 30 pound pack to maintain my balance. And I can also use it when I'm setting up uh, temporary shelter by using the poles almost like tent poles um, for with that uh, uh, shelter and that tarp and just setting up a makeshift tent uh, if I if I ever needed it but um, just having the trekking poles just gives me that added stability and uh, and comfort as I'm walking through the woods so I particularly like the trekking poles that have this flip block system um, basically you flip it in order to be able to adjust to the length that is comfortable for you. The reason I like this flip lock system is because in the winter time when I'm wearing gloves, I can easily just flip the lock even with gloves on and be able to make the adjustment to the right length. The other thing I like to make sure that I keep in my bag is a compass. So. When you're out in the woods, I wouldn't plan on relying totally on electronic 
devices such as GPSs, your cell phone, even my inReach. Um, if you're trying to navigate, you really need to learn how to use a, um, a compass uh, and you also need to be able to read a map and compare your bearing to where you are on a map. Um, that's a, an essential skill, especially if you're going out into places that you've never been before and you're, you're trying to navigate backwoods or mountains and uh, you really need to be able to um, utilize or use a compass and a map in the event that something happens to one of your uh, electronic devices. Another safety feature is the fact that this particular model of compass has a mirror. Um, the mirror is used for helping to assist in, in taking a bearing, but it can also be utilized to signal um, with that mirror. So you can actually utilize the mirror and, and send signals if you happen to be lost and there's, you know, search and rescue is looking for you, you can actually flash your mirror toward the uh, airplane or helicopter and be able to signal for help. Another thing in my bag that you that you're going to want to make sure that you keep, and most photographers do this anyway, is a headlamp. So in the event that you're going to be out for an overnight, uh, it's always a good idea to have uh, a headlamp. Um, most photographers will have some type of light, whether it's a flashlight, headlamp, uh, in order to do light painting or um, you know, just being able to walk in or walk out for uh, sunset or sunrise photographs and you're walking on the trail and it's kind of dusky out uh, and, or it's pitch black and you need a way to be able to see the trail, having a headlamp and flashlight is essential. Well, one of the things that I neglected to tell you about uh, in the field is two additional items that I like to try to uh, keep with me or at least think about when I'm out in the field on my own. That is keeping a first aid kit or a medical kit. Uh, this one has a waterproof bag, um, but you can also utilize a Ziploc bag. And primarily all I keep in it uh, are things like band-aids, um, uh, gauze, medical tape, tweezers to be able to remove ticks or splinters, uh, first aid creams for burns or for uh, antibiotic cream, anti-itch cream. Uh, you can get little packets or you can get the regular small size tubes, uh, sample size tubes at your local drugstore. Uh, I also carry a, um, uh, acetaminophen or ibuprofen just in case you have body aches from a long hike or from carrying uh, a lot of weight with your camera gear or just a headache uh, just in general. So I always make sure that I keep keep one of these uh, in my bag at all times, which is why I neglected to even think about it because it's something I don't have to think about. I always keep it in my side pocket of my bag and it's always there. Uh, just just something to keep in mind uh, to be able to handle any types of minor cuts or burns. Secondly, just keep in mind that no photograph is worth your life. When you're out in the field on your own as a landscape photographer, you are your own uh, safety backup. There's just, there's no one, obviously there's no one else there to help you. So don't take unnecessary risk when you're trying to get that awesome or unique photo. It's, it's just not worth your life to be falling off a cliff or rolling down a hill or getting pulled underwater when you're by yourself. Now, if you're hiking with a partner or you're photographing with someone else and you can mitigate the risk, then you can take those chances, but you have to, you have to think, you have to be careful and, and be your own uh, advocate for your safety. 
you don't want to be like a lot of these people that I see on social media who just absolutely needed to get a photo that no one else has and uh, unfortunately end up perishing because they fell off a cliff or, um, you know, got hurt so badly that they couldn't get to help. So just keep that in mind when you're out in the, uh, in the field and trying to photograph. What are your thoughts? What types of things do you do to keep yourself safe when you're out shooting landscape photography? If I've mentioned some things that you don't agree with or you want to add to uh, or you have additional items that I didn't even mention, please list them in the comments below. I, I'd be interested in, in reading those and maybe adding to my kit, you know, for some of those items that I didn't even think of that maybe you, you thought of. And if you like this type of content as it relates to um, outdoor or adventure photography, landscape photography, please consider subscribing. And if this content was something that was beneficial to you, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to receive notifications of future videos that I upload, then click on the bell. And every time I upload a new video, you'll get a notification uh, in your email. It just lets you know that, hey, I've uploaded a new video. It also helps the channel and helps it helps me in getting more viewership, which means I can start doing more videos like this. And I appreciate you stopping and, and watching the video. And like always, be safe out there and go out and capture great light.